Business Brain, the show for entrepreneurs, episode 428 for Friday, March 3rd, 2023. <music> Greetings, folks, and welcome to, welcome back to Business Brain. Did I call it Business Brain or Small Business Show in the intro? <laughs> I think you called it business brain, but you know, it's a, it's a back and forth. Yeah. I don't like, I, I don't know why I paused at that, but anyway, we are business brain. We used to be the small business show. We changed it because we found what we were talking about was our using our business brains. And so that's what we call the show now because it makes so much sense to us anyway, and hopefully to yes. you to apply your business brain logic and thought processes to lots of different things to maintain success or at least a successful perspective. The perspective of success, I think, is key. And that's what we do here. And still here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And I'm Shannon Jean. I'm still in Lafayette, having a, a rare sunny day out here, which nice. is odd to say in California, but we've had such a wet and snowy winter. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. been great. It's been fantastic. Cool. Um, but uh, what's on I your have mind a today? For you today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have this. Uh, so I, ha I have a question about this ESG, uh, environmental social governance, and it's t it's kind of a, a a concept of how to rate companies, typically large companies and like publicly traded and okay. other things, uh, in another way than just profits related to you know, okay. carbon and environment and also social oh. causes, diversity, uh, inclusiveness, all this kind of stuff. So my question to all the business owners that are listening out there um, is how important is it for your business, for your success and your place in your community to embrace causes like this, um, whether it's social causes that you may feel strongly about um, or promoting your this diversity parts of things that uh, or your environmental impact that I my, my question is that I, you know we certainly in the in my business uh, history here we you know I we always talked about how we help the environment with our repairs and keeping stuff out of landfill sure and because it's a good thing to do and it was good business and so that that kind of thing's pretty basic. Um, but I'm curious how important that has become uh, to other companies out there. You know, is it, um, are, do you have to focus or are you focusing on, um, how do I phrase this in a, in a careful way? Uh, are you hiring the, focus solely on hiring the best person for like a position or, do you need to focus on we need to fill these kinds of roles with this type of of person or is that just crazy and you're just always trying to hire the best person you know i i i, I, I do know sincere question you know it's a good question i i i want to i will answer it i i want to sort of address the first part of what you said okay. first yep i i like to be able to sleep at night i yeah, i've i've me and too. so i have always uh, prioritized that over maximum profits. Uh, I, I okay. could, I could, I could, I've always said I would be more uh, profitable if I were a sociopath, right? Like if I didn't care about other people, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. well, I mean, maybe. right. You know, like there's definitely decisions I've made because I, yeah. I like to be able to look people in the eye and know that at least in my opinion, I didn't screw them. They yeah, might so feel differently, yeah. right? They yeah. might feel yeah, differently, but I know that I'm not actively trying to screw you. Certainly there are times when I've realized, you know, sort of almost retroactively, like, well, I really screwed that person. Like that sucks. But I don't, I don't, and I don't like those feelings. And, and so I like to sleep at night. So this yeah. idea in general, uh, that, that is sort of described with ESG, the idea of putting value on things in addition to profits is a good thing, I think. And I say that as a business owner, yeah. not as someone sitting on the sidelines looking at businesses. I, I say it about my businesses. Maybe, maybe that's a better way of, of phrasing this. I don't, I don't find myself 
choosing to or not to do business with people based on these kinds of factors, though. I, like yeah. I choose the the businesses that I relate with, and 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 the, there is an asterisk to that I I always say. Hopefully you don't get mad at me for saying this, but at Backbeat Media, we have a no assholes clause, okay? And yeah, I love and, that. <laughs> and if we wind up, it really, it's about, we don't, we rarely hire people that fall into that category. And if we do, like, I, I, it just, ha it doesn't happen. Uh, but we have found ourselves partnered up with shows who uh, whose hosts uh, or publishers uh, did fall into that category. And we, and we do a pretty good job and a pretty swift job of extracting our, ourselves from that scenario. We like to, we like to like the people that we are, that we work with. Yeah. That's and, great. Yeah. It, but, but, but that's, that's, all, but that, but see, that's also rooted in success of the business. Like I know that if I'm distracted by some jackass, then I, I won't be as, as successful with the business. But other than that, I really don't choose I don't use these criteria to choose whether I want to work with a certain service provider or not. It's are they going to provide the right service for my business? And do I think they're going to have the longevity I need for them to have? Like, I mean, if it's somebody that I plan on partnering mm -hmm. with for the long term, well, then I want I hope that they will also be in business for the long term. Right. Because it sure. sucks Absolutely. to have to change, yep. you know, certain things like fundamental parts of your business infrastructure or whatever. But, but otherwise, if it's somebody that I, you know, I'm going to do a project for six months. Okay. Well, I do, I, do I think they're going to last for six months? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, let's go. But other than that, like, I don't, I don't put, I don't even think about these things to your point, uh, about hiring the right people, regardless of anything else. Like to me, I'm a small business owner, as I know you are, I can't afford to not hire the best person for the job. Right. I, there's no way that I can pad my staff for stats and survive. Like, it, because no, every single person on my payroll is a huge expense to my business. And so I, it, they have to be the right person. Now, does that mean I only ever hire, you know, white, older, older white males, just like me? No, have no, I hired, yeah. have I, have I hired plenty of older white males? Yes. Have I hired women? Yes. Have I hired, yeah. uh, women who happen to be like, you know, a part of some, uh, um, what would well, be considered a minority group or something? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But all of that, I am like, I've, I've never thought about it actively before. I'm like processing all the people that have worked for me and it's like, Oh yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Tony, she was a Latina woman. Okay. Yeah. So technically yeah, that sure. box got checked, but that box wasn't there to be checked be to begin with. We Correct. hired Tony because she was the best person for the job. The job. Yeah. I, right. I and, and, but I mean, I also, I had no issue hiring her. <laughs> like, like that, yeah, that no, goes no, no. without you didn't saying. You start with that. Yes, no, I didn't start with that, but it also, it never dawned on me during the process that, oh, well, exactly. I mean, should I, should I not hire her? Should I instead hire an old white male? Like it, yeah. it, that, no, that, that yeah. I can't afford to think like that as a small right. business owner. Not, I, I it, thankfully I don't think like that. I think. I think that's, I think it's dangerous to think like that. In no, both none of directions. Us would, I, I would agree. Yeah. And I don't think any of us would be successful if we, if we thought like that. No, but uh, a large company, I've, cause I've worked at large companies. I worked at Citibank. I worked at, at, at General Electric and I worked at Deloitte and Touche. Deloitte and Touche is the smallest of those three. Uh, but they were certainly big enough to have useless people in middle management which means there's a lot of fat in the middle of the budget, right? That could yep, be trimmed yep. out. That's not. Those kinds of companies could afford to hire based on stats as opposed yeah. to only hiring based on skills. And I, I don't want to suggest that that's what they're doing, but it sure sounds like that might be happening. I don't know. I Like, I never saw that while I was there, but this was decades ago, you know, before this yeah. stuff. Yeah, I think out. a lot of it is, uh, to your point, the – the smaller businesses um, in number one, in many places, at least it's California, it's illegal to focus your hiring on a specific. Uh, oh yeah. Anything, right. Yeah. You, you just can't do it. You, you have to, um, you know, again, try to hire the best person without any sort of discrimination either way. Correct. Right? 
uh, via age, via you right. know, all kinds of oh, things. Oh, yeah, yeah. All, all the things that people can't change yeah. about themselves. Correct. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, so, of course. Uh, and, I, and I guess, like, like, I just noticed that, like, uh, the ESG, there's this big group that's that's running them. And, and, and a lot of these uh, mutual fund companies like Vanguard, they were all in uh, BlackRock and Alicia, they were all in on this ESG thing. But I've noticed lately they have, uh, they have, started to drop out uh so oh. it's kind of an interesting thing and i and i just i'm curious and i'd like to you know let's let's talk a little bit more about it how it if it's applicable for small to medium sized businesses that we typically talk about hey if you're looking to get money for your business make sure you tune in to the business credit and financing show hosted by funding expert ty crandall Ty has helped over 50,000 entrepreneurs get capital, and during each of his podcast episodes, he interviews industry experts and gurus about how to easily get the capital you need to grow your business and the strategies you can deploy to grow your company faster. Ty covers topics like how to get money to start a business, the types of financing you can get even if you have credit issues, the fundability criteria lenders use to approve you, and more. If you want to tap into business credit and financing to grow faster, visit creditsuite.com and click resources and then select podcast. Then choose your preferred platform to subscribe and listen on previous episodes. Head there now and tell them we sent you here from Business Brain to get your free step-by-step -step business credit building blueprint. Again, that's creditsuite.com. We'll put a link in the show notes so you can get there. And our thanks to Ty for doing this swap with us. So this is an interesting conversation, Shannon, as, as all of our conversations are. But this one has really made me think uh, about about me uh, i've i've mm -hmm. all this this thing that we can encapsulate as esg has always um given me pause like is this really the right thing and and as we've been having this conversation i think the reason one core reason that it gives me pause is me being concerned that at at some point if this becomes the norm that i will be forced to factor yeah. all these things into my hiring decisions as opposed to just finding the 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 in uh, the best per or hiring the best person I can find in any given scenario cuz that scares me not being able to hire the best person scares me but if if my yeah. if my business is being because I have to judge my business based on well two factors like I said before one can I sleep at night and number two uh am I am I making enough money to pay everybody else, including myself, right? Like that, that's kind of keep the business afloat. That's the whole idea. And hopefully more than afloat, profitable even. And yeah. to have external factors come into that of any kind it is always a problem. And I've seen it before where it's like, you know, thankfully my businesses are small enough where I wasn't forced early on to like provide healthcare, which would have cratered me, you know, at, yeah. at an early stage. Or providing a retirement plan, you know, it's not mandatory that you have to do this until your business starts hitting a certain size. I guess even retirement, you can you can stay out of it, but health insurance for sure. You know, you yeah. hit you hit a certain number of employees, well, it, you got to do it, and and those things can can dramatically affect your bottom line. And so I think it's from that standpoint is where my concern with this comes from, because on the surface, I I tend to agree with all of the sort of tenets of this, I just don't like having my myself shackled when it comes to who, who I'm able to hire or who I'm not able to hire for my business or other areas of the, you know, yes. this environmental part of things. And, yes. uh, you know, one of the things that is, I think a joke of it, and what I was reading up about this ESG is like the patrol, like petroleum company, like Exxon, you know, whatever had a higher ESG rating than Tesla, the, you know, electric car manufacturer. And uh, I just like, well, wait, what, why is that it? And they have this number that they come up with, but it's skewed based on all kinds of different things that I think is a, a lot of virtue signaling and that it's easily manipulate, manipulated by these large companies to get a better score, like sure. a, a petroleum company who you'd think would be like, wait, you know, why do they have a higher score than a, than a, a you know, company like Tesla? Yeah. And, and I have the same concerns as you do. 
I don't want anybody to force me to do anything. I want to do the right thing, and I have done it, like you have, because again, like you, I, I want to sleep at night, and right. I, <laughs> you want to create a great organization. That's how you become successful. We've talked about it here ad nauseum, you know, about getting the right people and and training them and moving them up the the helping pushing their career yeah. up the ladder, which lifts you know it. You lift everybody up, right? Yep. Uh, and so. I often find that the folks making these rules and trying to make them more formal and enforceable, if you will, have had no experience in trying to meet payroll, uh, you know, grow their grow a company from nothing. And so it's very easy for them to uh, make these kinds of, of statements, rules, recommendations, because they've never had to, to live with them. Uh, and so that, that always gets my hackles up. Yeah. Um, I wonder, I, I wonder too, yeah. though, if part of this, if you and I aren't, if, if, it, if instead of it being them missing something, it's us missing something. And I, and I don't, Perhaps. Mean, that, yeah, you I don't mean that you and I are doing something wrong, but yeah. neither of us, and correct me if I'm wrong, neither of us has ever run a publicly traded company, nor have we run a VC financed company, a venture correct. capital finance. So Neither one of us has ever been in the position as business owner to defend our financial decisions about the business to someone other than maybe our business partner or our spouse, right? But but to a a a you know the general public, we don't have to defend our our decisions because perhaps, and again, I'm just you know I'm I'm playing devil's advocate here. Perhaps that mindset has gotten a little too entrenched. The whole idea of just serving wall street and, Good, yeah. and profit, it, profit, it. profit. Yes. It's easy. If, if you literally your job, like the CEO's job of a publicly traded company is, is increase shareholder value. That's the CEO's job. That's correct. We could sit here and listen to arguments about how it shouldn't be that. But yeah. the fact is that is the job description. It starts right. and ends right there. So, when that's your job description, it I would presume that it could be easy to lose to to lose sight of the well yeah it's my business and I want to sleep at night so I want to make different decisions about things no you don't get that luxury when you're the CEO of a publicly traded company you do not you yes. you are in that position with all guns aimed at you when the profits yeah. don't come through so I can see where I mean. And, and now I'm going to throw a tinfoil hat theory out there. <laughs> what if this whole ESG thing was created in secret by the CEOs of publicly traded companies saying, we want people to judge us on more than just the profits. Oh, yeah, maybe. I, I mean, never know. like, yeah, it could be right. I, I, yeah. I realize that's probably not possible. And, and lots of people are laughing at me right now for my naivete, but, but like, Think about it for a second. I always try to put myself in other people's shoes before I start hating them. And yeah. very quickly, I, I find reason why I, I would not hate them when when I try to put myself in their shoes. And so maybe that's what this is. Maybe this is a whole like conspiracy maybe. theory come, you know, cooked up by the, the CEOs of Exxon and, and, you know, everybody else that was sick and tired of... Uh, yeah, under the gun. I, I, I don't know. I almost didn't even bring it up as, as a show topic because yeah. I was like, well, I don't know how applicable it is. But it got me thinking about, um, you know, mainly a question and a question for our, our listeners is, is this something you think about? Is it an important part of how you run your business, how you market your business? Um, how, do your are your customers requesting this type of thing yeah. right is it is it more market driven than anything else because obviously to be successful you want to adapt and 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 you also want to reflect your community right so uh it, it that those are questions i have i don't have the answer no and, and i would reasons... i would ask those questions I, I i i guess i would i i think it's important to add some clarity are you yeah. as a business owner making different decisions than you otherwise would make because of these yeah. external definitions. There's nothing like if you were, like I said, I, I want to sleep at night. So I have my list of decisions and, and criteria that are important to me. And I follow those. Uh, but when somebody else comes in and tells me what those criteria need to be, that's different. So that's my, that's that, that would be my sort of clarifying question here is 
Are you yeah. doing these things and are you doing them because other people say you have to, or are you doing them because it's just a natural thing for you to do? Yeah. That's, that's a two really good question. Very, very and different and things. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I, I, it's just a fascinating side. And I, and I wonder, you know, uh, I wonder how it's impacting other businesses. So that's one of the reasons why I do this show is Same. to learn as much as I can. So uh, educate us at feedback at businessbrain.show. Feedback at businessbrain.show. That's where you send in questions, comments, answers. And no matter what you send in, if your email is featured in an episode, you're entered to win that MacBook Air this year. Keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next week.